welcome to my channel if you haven't been here before or welcome back if you watch my videos and if you do i thank you so so much as always i love to upcycle clothes i take thrifted items or tired worn out items out of my closet and turn them into fun edgy wearable pieces again that you're excited to wear so today we're going to take this old pair of jeans and turn it into a fun, trendy maxi skirt. Let's get rolling. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just lay my jeans out on the table and I am going to cut this seam completely open from the bottom of the leg up through the crotch and down through the bottom of the leg. And I am going to cut the lighting's terrible today. It's a drizzly, rainy day, so hopefully you can see that. So there's the seam. I'm cutting on the back side of the seam. So here's the back side of the jeans. I'm not cutting on the front, but I really don't think it would matter if you did cut on the front. I just had to choose one, and I chose to cut along that seam on the back side of the jeans. So I am just going to cut that all the way open. And when I get to this thick part here in the crotch, I'm just going to cut through it and keep on going. Now I have these completely cut open. And what I'm going to do is go back to that seam and I'm going to cut it completely off. I don't want to sew over that thick seam, so I'm just going to cut it off. And I'm just going to go back all the way around, across the crotch and back down until I, it's all off. Okay, now I have this seam all cut off, and what I want to do is take my seam ripper, and right here where this seam, let's see, this seam is still attached, I am going to seam rip this open until it gets to the bottom of the zipper. And I will do the same on the back side only there's a little more to go here. I made a, let's see, can you see that? I made a chalk line about a third of the way up from the pockets here. And I just made a chalk line right there. So that's where I thought I would stop. So I will take a seam ripper and I'll rip this seam open on the front and the back. The back will be a little more to rip open here. Okay, so I'm on the back. I got the front seam ripped open. Now you'll probably have to seam rip two rows if you have a pretty standard pair of jeans. These are Levi's. So I'm seam ripping this right here. And then I have a piece under here that I have to seam rip. And once you get digging into this, you'll see what I'm talking about with those extra row of stitching there. See, there's two rows, and we're getting both those seam ripped. Okay, so here's the back side, all seam ripped open. I'm just plucking out those little strings that I cut. Now, this side is nice and smooth, and this side is wrinkled and kind of bunched up because it was folded over when it was sewn, and I'm just going to go to my ironing board right now and just iron that flat. Okay, so now I have these all cut open and I put them back on to see if I need to cut any off the bottom. These were cropped and short and they hit exactly where I want them. The reason I waited till after I cut them open is because now if I want these to become more of a high-waisted skirt, 
I can pull those up without the crotch being in the way to see how much I would want. And so maybe you want an inch or two cut off, just measure along the bottom, an inch or two, whatever you decide, and just cut that off at this point. But mine are just fine. And now I'm going to these American Eagle jeans. I liked these because they just have fun coloring. You know, a faded leg, and they will be a little bit of a contrast. They'll be a little bit lighter, and I want that. On mine, I don't want a dramatic um, contrast. I don't want them super dark or super light, and I thought these were just right. You can do whatever you want. You could even use a different fabric if you want at this point, you know, a floral or whatever you want to do. It's your project. So I'm going to use these to fill in that triangle between the legs that we cut. And if it matters to you, these are a 31 waist, 32 length. Okay, so now I'm just cutting the pant legs off close to that pocket. And now I want to open the pant legs up. There are two seams. One is sort of invisible. Well, not invisible, but not as noticeable. And then the other seam has that extra stitching. And you can do whatever you want. If you don't want to see that extra stitching and have that distraction, you could cut it open right here and cut that seam off. I want that seam. So I am going to cut it on the less noticeable side. And I'll do this on both jeans. I'm just going to cut them open. Okay, so now at this point, you have sort of a decision to make. Do you want this more narrow, like a pencil skirt? Do you want it a little bit flared? Or do you want it very flared, which to me is very boho hippie. That's what I'm opting for. So here is the pant leg that we cut off. So it basically looks like this. And then we cut it open and it looks like this. Now, if you wanted your jeans more narrow, this piece would be plenty. Okay, it would be enough if you want more of a pencil or a little bit of a flare. But if you're like me and you want it very flared, it will not be enough. See, we have gaps. So what I have to do is go to another pair of jeans and cut out the, what I did is cut out the back of each pant leg. I didn't want the front. It was more decorative. So I cut out two more panels of jeans, pant legs, and these are just the backs. I need two because I need one for the front side of our skirt and one for the back side. So now I will have to piece that first pant leg that we cut open and one of these together. Now I have two of these. This will be the front, and I also have one for the back side. So I'll set this aside and work on just one panel at a time. And what I'm going to have to do is cut all these seams off because I am going to have to sew these all together. And so I'll just cut. <laughs> The seams off, including the very bottom. I'll get that done and I'll come back and show you what I do. Okay, now I have the seams all cut off and I'm just cleaning these up a little bit. Do you see how this pant leg has kind of a crazy flare right there? And these did too, a little bit. I'm just going to trim that off a little bit. Just so it's a little more straight in order to sew it together. And now I'm just going to sew these three pieces together. Now here's another decision you'll have to make. 
Do you want the seams on the outside of the skirt? When you wash and dry it, those seams will fray and give it a more tattered look. Or you can, you can put the seams on the inside and give it a more clean finish. I am going, I am going to have my seams on the outside. I want to see that frame. So all I'm going to do is go to my sewing machine and I won't pin this or anything. And I want that odd third one that we have in the middle so that we don't look off balance. I'm not into symmetry, but a little bit I am. <laughs> okay, so I will sew wrong sides together because I want the seams on the outside. If you want the seams on the inside, you'll want to sew the right sides together. But I'm doing wrong sides together, so I'll just pick a panel. It doesn't matter if it's this side or this side. And I'll put the wrong sides together, and I will go to my machine, just stick this in my machine, and sew and straighten it up sort of along the way. And I will use gold thread, gold colored thread, not metallic, gold, not gold metallic, gold colored thread because that's the color that's in the jeans. And I'll use a quarter inch seam allowance and go all the way down. And I will go over that twice just because they're jeans and I want to, I want these to be casual and I want to get comfortable and not worry about anything coming apart. So just for extra durability, I'm going to go down that twice. And then when I get that sewn, I'm going to grab this pant leg and do the same thing, wrong sides together, sew it down. And I'll sew it twice for extra durability. Now, I will do this times two. So this will be the front, and I also have three panels that will be the back. So I will be doing this procedure or process twice. When you double stitch something, your stitch length doesn't have to be quite as small because you're reinforcing it with another stitch. And be sure to use a denim needle. It, I think it says jeans needle on the packet that you get. I just get mine at Walmart. You can get them just about anywhere. Okay, so here's what my panels are looking like. Three panels sewn together. And I have two of these. And now I'm just bringing it to my ironing board, putting the right side down, the wrong side's facing me. And I just have my iron on a hot setting with some steam. And I'm just going to press those seams that we just sewed. Okay. So now I have my jeans laid out on the table, right side up. These are the original ones where we cut that seam out of. And I am going to pin and sew just one side at a time. And I am going to start with, so remember when we seam ripped that crotch, we have a piece that overlaps right here. I'm going to start with this side where this piece tucks under. I am going to start pinning and sewing along this side. So the first thing I want to do is I'm just going to take a piece of cardboard and you can use your cutting mat or whatever you want. This is just so that the pins don't grab the opposite side of the pant leg. This makes it a lot easier to pin. Okay, so now what I want to do, I have this laid out pretty neatly so that I can take my one of my panels that we made and I'm choosing I don't know this one's fine they're both pretty identical it doesn't really matter and I am just going to slip that underneath these pant legs now this will just take a little plane with so that everything's nice and neat we don't have to worry too much about that side because we're pinning this side first but we will straighten up that side just because we want, like I want these lines not to be too cockeyed. Let me eyeball it here a little bit. 
Okay. And when you have things nice and neat, you can start pinning. And I am going to pin, I'm going to lift up that flap and I'm going to start pinning at that point. And then I am just going to continue pinning all the way down the pant leg. I know I have plenty underneath there to catch these pins. Okay, I'll go ahead and get that pinned and I'll come back. Okay, I have this one side all pinned now. And what I will do is I will take it to my sewing machine. I'll put this bottom end in first and I will double stitch this. So I'll use a fairly small straight stitch. It doesn't have to be as small as I use a lot of times. And I will just stay close to that edge and I am going to sew that, this pant leg onto the panel. And when I get up here, let's see if I can show you. So underneath that flap, I will just continue sewing to that point and as close as I can get to that zipper area there. Okay, so now I have this side all sewn on and I am going to turn it inside out just for a minute so that I can clip off, cut off that extra. So let me find it here. So this is where we sewed right here and here's the opposite side. And here, you can't see it, because I can barely see it, but here is the line that we stitched. I am just going to cut off all this extra because I don't need that anymore. And I'm just going to be careful <laughs> that I don't cut the opposite side of my skirt here. So here's my line I just stitched. I'm just cutting off that chunk so that it's not in my way anymore. And I double stitched this. I don't know if I mentioned that. So I'll just go ahead and clean this up, get that extra cut off, and come back. So here's what we have so far. We have this all sewn on on this side, and this is where I trimmed. It's all cleaned up on the opposite side. And now I want to pin it and do the same thing to the other side and I'll show you that. Okay, so I'm basically doing the same thing on the opposite side. I slid my cardboard in and then I just took my panel that we sewed together and just arranged it in there nicely and I will start pinning. Now, see this overlap right here? I am just going to overlap that nicely and stick a pin in it. and just pin all the way down the pant leg like we did on that side. And then when I sew, I will start at the bottom end. It's just easier to get into my machine that way. When I have such a long stretch, if I put this narrow end in first, it would be hard to get to the bottom. This way it's easy to get here. So I'll just start at the bottom, double stitch it, quarter inch, well, as close as you can, you know, quarter inch or less. And then when you get up to this point, all you do, see we're sewing along here, you just continue to sew over that little triangle and all the way up to the bottom of the zipper. And do that twice, you want that durable. So I'll get that pinned, go to my machine and get that stitched on. Okay, now that front panel's all sewn in and I just want to turn it over and trim that other piece like we did on the opposite side we have this big sort of overhang right here and I don't need that so I'm just going to carefully cut all my threads and just trim that off being careful not to cut anything on the opposite side
Now I just need to turn it over and work on the opposite side here. Now I have it flipped on the back side. I have the top up here towards you. And I am just going to do the same thing. I'm going to start on the side that is tucked underneath this protruding piece right here. And if you can see on this one, this panel doesn't come all the way to the top to where we seam ripped it. And that's okay. I'm doing that because I want it long enough. If I pull this all the way up, this panel will be shorter than my pant leg and I don't want that. So I will just pin starting there all the way down and that will be completely covered up with the opposite side. So it's no big deal if it doesn't come all the way up to where we started or ended our seam ripping here. So. I'm just going to pin this on and take it to my sewing machine and do exactly like we did on the front side. Okay, this is where we just stitched and I trimmed that extra piece off the back and now I just want to pin the last leg here. And so I'll just take that flap and I'll overlap it nicely. Stick pins through there. This is where we ended up seam ripping it. I need to put a pin starting there, come all the way down and pin this entire leg and get it sewn, just like we did everything else. Okay, now I have the panels all sewn front and back. And what I want to do now is just trim this bottom. So here's one of my pant legs. I'm getting the back side of this skirt out of the way so I don't accidentally cut it. And here is the edge of my other pant leg. Now I want everything to match up with these two pant legs. So I am just going to eyeball this and I'm just going to watch, I'm going to watch this other pant leg as I cut across. And I just want it all to line up with these two pant legs. Okay, now we just cut across a couple seams that we originally made for those panels. I'm going to have to go to my, or my sewing machine and just put a little stitch and at the bottom of each one of those seams so that it doesn't come apart. And these are fine because I didn't cut those. So there and there, and then I'll turn it on the back, do the same thing, just kind of lay this out so that I can see the edge of the actual pant leg that we started with. And I am just going, here's one edge of the pant leg, there's another. I'm just going to eyeball this and cut across and make those even. Now on this one, I'm going to have to stitch the bottom of these seams as well so that they don't come apart. So I'll go do that now. Okay, trimmed up, I have the seams secured. Now at this point, if you would like to, you can run a zigzag stitch towards the bottom of this skirt all the way around. That will stop excessive fraying. There will still be some fraying. And I like excessive fraying, so I'm not going to do that. But if you'd like to, you can run a zigzag stitch along the bottom now. Okay, so here's what it's looking like. I'm obsessed. <laughs> so cute. But... This is perfectly fine as it is. You could wear it just like this and would be edgy and cool, but I'm going to do a little more. I'm going to make it a little more funky. I'll show you what I do. So the first thing I'm going to do is one of the pants that I used earlier to cut for this has some cool pockets on the back. And so I just cut out one and I cut about half an inch to three quarters of an inch around the actual pocket 
so that I have room to sew without actually sewing onto the pocket because the flap and everything that would get complicated. So I am just going to lay this on my skirt towards this side and I'm going to angle it. And I already have my cardboard underneath here and my pins are at my sewing machine. Hold on one second. Okay. I actually lowered it a little bit. So I am just going to pin this on probably, well, for sure all four corners and maybe in between each corner just so it doesn't shift around. And I will just sew this on around that little extra piece of denim that I left. And I will use a gold colored zigzag stitch. And a zigzag stitch, just like a regular stitch, has different widths. And I'm just going to use my widest width and go around that pocket and get it sewn on. Okay, now that I have my pocket sewn on, I'm going to add, I went back to that, remember from the inside we trimmed those big chunks of denim? Well, I went back to that. I like how faded this is. And I'm just going to add, this is a triangle shape and it's 28 inches tall. You'll do your own thing, but mine is 28 inches tall and six and a half inches across at the bottom. And I am going to lay it about there and I have my cardboard underneath already. And I am going to pin that on and I'm letting it overlap. This is the side seam of the original jeans. I'm letting it overlap that a little bit. And I'm going to pin that on. Once I get it all pinned on, I will just use a straight stitch and stay fairly close to the edge and just sew the entire piece on. Okay, so this is the triangle that I sewed on. And now I just am taking, I have some sheer sort of lace from a skirt from another project. And I cut out two pieces that are about one and a half inches wide and the longest one, this one is 27 inches long, and this one is 24 inches long. And I am just going to, left my pins at my sewing machine again, but I'll just pin these on and go to my machine. And with black thread, I'll just do a straight stitch all the way up and down each piece. Now this one, will wrap around the back. I'll pin that wrapping around the back like that. Okay, I'll get those pinned and sewn. Okay, before I pin and sew those, I'm going to show you the last thing I'm going to do because I already have gold thread in my machine. So I want to do this patch before I switch out my thread and go to black. So I have this patch, just scrap that I have and I love that it's brown and has a little black in it. And I try to do that a lot, like mix brown and black. So if I had some great brown boots or some black boots, they're both going to work with this skirt. I do the same with my purses. I, I will put like silver and gold embellishments on it so that it works with any color jewelry you're wearing. So this patch is, let's see, I wrote it all down, nine by seven. And I am just going to put it a little bit below that pocket, maybe overlapping the corner a little bit. And I want it to wrap around the side like that. So I will just pin that on and sew it with a straight stitch with my gold thread. Okay, here's what it's looking like. Now I'm going to wash it in a regular cycle, tumble dry, so all those raw edges get nice and frayed. And I'm probably going to have to clip a couple out of control strings from fraying. I will come back and show you what it looks like on. Okay, here it is on. I have it with a pair of vintage boots, a sweater, just like a really fun tie hippie belt. But this would also be super cute with like a pair of platform black boots and a black leather jacket and a white t-shirt or an everyday outfit. Go to the grocery store, put a hooded sweatshirt on, some chunky white 
tennis shoes and the skirt. Okay, that's all I got. Thank you so, so much for making it this far. And thank you for watching.